Hi everyone. As this new remote learning term or year gets underway at colleges and universities around the world, I have heard and read the complaints and frustrations of many students about the way their academic institution has responded. Students have raised issues about how their courses are being delivered online, the types of assessments, their ability to get extra help and accommodations, resources and opportunities provided by the university, as well as issues regarding tuition and other fees. And all of these appear to be entirely valid grievances and criticisms that students have. In this video, I want to share with you what I think is an important consideration for how you think about and approach this new and chaotic school term or year. It's a classic case of good news and bad news. A downside, but also an upside. Let's start with the downside. This whole situation is unprecedented. No universities or colleges anywhere had been thinking about or preparing for an academic term or year like this. Were there online courses before 2020? Well, of course. But they were done by certain institutions and even certain courses within those institutions. The situation we are now in requires almost every professor, instructor, teaching assistant to design and administer their course online. Think about what that entails from a planning and communicating standpoint, from a logistical standpoint, from a skill and knowledge standpoint, and all of that within the confines of heavy bureaucracy that these institutions generally have. Faculties have to structure their courses and programs in a way to still meet their academic standards and policies and yet adapt to the new reality of having no physical contact with students and oftentimes even with each other. This is something they have been scrambling to set up in preceding months. The lack of students on campus adds a financial strain to the operations of universities, even if they keep tuition fees the same or even increase them. Undoubtedly, enrollment numbers will also suffer, perhaps by a lack of interest and the inability to do in-person tours and marketing efforts. All the other administrative and support functions that universities provide to their faculties also must change and adapt their often archaic systems to meet this new standard. This is all a perhaps long-winded way of saying that no one was ready and they are still trying to figure out what to do. But that's exactly where the bright side comes in, the good news. There's an opportunity for students now more than ever to take charge of their education. And it's by being vocal and engaging with the university administration and faculties to suggest, discuss, and implement the practices and policies that will help students during this pandemic affected time. I mentioned the bureaucracy that universities operate with, making them slow to change and resistant to the process. Often that's because of maintaining a tradition and the status quo that has worked for a long time. Something along the lines of, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Except when students largely aren't on campus and the entire education dynamic has been forced to change, that line of thinking is no longer defensible. As students, if you have ideas, proposals, discussions and conversations that you want to have about changes and adaptions to the university's different systems this year, you should not face any barriers in doing so. In fact, they should be encouraged. The usual structure in place at universities is to have a student government that is elected by students, and these elected individuals then represent different student bodies, like the Engineering Students Association, the Graduate Students Associations, and then they would be the voice of the students in any major developments, plans, or decisions that would go on with the faculty or the administration of the university. That infrastructure makes sense when there's a well-functioning system that is running, and the only input needed from students is in response to some new news or issues or events. But in the case of this pandemic, students of every faculty are going to be dealing with an abundance of new issues, for which they will have valid criticisms and suggestions in dealing with them. To rely on the same student council structure to handle this would simply overwhelm them. A student council would simply be a bottleneck in this process because of the amount of feedback coming in from students. So that's why in these unique circumstances, I would advise students to directly engage with their university's faculty and administration to voice their concerns and propose their solutions. Like I said before, you, the students, are in the best position to assess what the best course of action would be in response to the issues that affect you. Whether it's exam taking, lectures, tuition, extracurricular activities, whatever it is. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the university should do everything you tell them. Students are a major stakeholder of universities, but they are not the only one. Universities also need to consider other stakeholders, like employees, their donors, government regulations, whenever they make a decision. But the point is that the regular system that universities rely on to recognize issues and respond to them would simply be too slow at a time where it is needed to be the most alert. So take initiative and take steps to make sure your college or university has active channels of communication with the student body in order to recognize the challenges that come up during this year or term. Don't be afraid if you think your problems are not as serious as others, and also don't be afraid if you think your solutions aren't the best. No one knows what the correct procedure or path is during this unprecedented time. 
the more information and perspectives we can contribute to the decision-making process, the better our chances of getting it right. I'd also advise you to not be afraid to criticize what you perceive as bad ideas or bad solutions. Speak out against opportunism or bad actors, whether they be other students, faculty, or university officials. As long as what you do and say is motivated by the best interest for the university and its students, don't hesitate to utilize your free speech. Let me know in the comments what changes you think your college or university needs during this time, and what steps, if any, you might engage in to push for such changes. Until next time.